Well, hello. Uh, I wanted to take today to talk about sort of just a general reporting problem and think about how to think about that problem within Dynamics. So today's reporting problem is, imagine I'm trying to do a report on the project dimension related to projects that I have in Dynamics. Uh, so if I go into an, an individual project, and this is a similar structure for customers, vendors, et cetera. And let me move my face out of the way. Put me over here. Hello, now I'm over here. Uh, you can see, right, projects have financial dimensions that are associated with them, right? And financial dimensions are all dependent on the, the needs of the business, et cetera. Uh, but this project has some set of financial dimensions. And let's say in this example, I want to report on the project dimension related to the, the projects that, that I have. To, let's say I want to make sure that these things are, are in sync. You can see that this one, right, the, the project is project number 97. The project dimension here is set as, as number seven, which would not be uh, 97. Like now they, they match. Let's say I just want to report to say, you know, where are these things matching? Where are they not matching? How would I go about doing that? Um, now, for most project information or for most uh, customer, vendor, other master data information, uh, I think the best place to go would be in your, your list page. So let's say I want some other piece of data. We'll say project manager. If I want to know the project managers related to these projects, I can come in here and I can insert columns. I can find that project manager field. Add that, move my face out of the way here. Goodbye, and I'm in the middle. So we'll add the project manager field, click update. Now I've added the project manager field. So this is this is great. We'll hide this one. Uh, now I can see which projects have project managers, which ones don't. That can be really helpful. I can save this as a view even. Move my head out of the way again. Save this as a view. And now if I'm ever curious which, which projects don't have project managers, I could you know, look at this view. That might be, be helpful. Uh, I could even right, create a, a view that was filtered to say, just show me blanks, right? To see the blanks you would say is exactly double quotation marks. And that'll give you just the ones where you have blanks. So this might be an, an error report. You're looking for that. Um, and then right one step further, you know, our, our handy friend Excel, I can always dump this thing to Excel. I can right click here, export all the rows. It's going to do a big export to Excel dump for me. And I can do right whatever I want with whatever Excel data. Hooray. So that's that's one way you could do something for project manager. However, the project financial dimension being one of the financial dimensions, it's structured a little bit differently. I can't get that to this list page. So I need another way to to go about that. Right. You'll see if I click here and click insert columns. You get the project financial dimension. Uh, in this list of, of associated project attributes. That's a bummer. Um, so what we can do is we can use the Excel add-in, which through OData does connect to the financial dimensions. And we can look at this. I can do open in Excel. So this is different from export to Excel. Exporting to Excel is a flat file of data. Open in Excel is a data connection with the database itself. So if I open this guy, I'm going to have to log in and authenticate myself, et cetera, et cetera. And now I get, uh, let's see, now I get, come on. Now 
now we get something like this. And by default, I've already added in that dimension default, but let me take that out and show you how I would go about adding that in. So if I update this and click yes, right, this might be what the, the standard view of the project data when you, you first say open in Excel, show me this. And so to edit this, I would go to the edit button for the projects table. I would find the dimension default, add that, update it. And now I have the financial dimensions associated with my projects. Let me say, hooray, except you'll notice that this string doesn't include the, the project financial dimension. What I, what I really want is here, if we go back to our projects, move my head right you'll see right we have four dimensions on the project business unit department project and service line but only three dimensions in this uh, dimension display value 004 there's a dash there's a blank dimension and then 023 so that's that's curious you would say how does the system know which dimensions we're supposed to have uh, in this excel report well that's driven by the financial dimension uh, configurations. So let me look at that. That's in the general ledger. I like to just expand all and press control F and say, oh, again, my head is in the way. Get out of their head, right? We want, we want financial dimension configuration for integrating applications. And this is, how the dimension string gets defined. So there, there, there are different dimension strings that can be used for different purposes, but the dimension format type of dimension default format is what drives the dimensions that we see when we connect to OData and look at those default dimensions. So if I bring the project dimension in here, um, Right, you see this format is business unit, cost center, department, and then project. And it, it happens pretty quick. If I hit save, do I want to save that? Yeah. I can go back to my Excel document and just refresh. And because it's interpreting the dimension default display value from uh, that configuration, you can see that it instantly has the, the financial dimension value for the project. So that's nice. Um, now there is a, um, a little thing that can be done in Virtual Studio to map the individual dimensions that you want into individual columns. And I'll include a link to that in the, the, the blog post. That's something that a, a developer would have to do. It's a sort of a one-time developer task is part of getting everything right um, for the, the end implementation. Of course, let's say you don't have time for that. You could uh, you know, do a, a text to column type thing and say, right, give me, right, let's use the, the dash as our delimiter, right? I want you to, to spit these out into the different values. That's great. Um, Fine. And really, these are different dimensions, right? If we look at our list, right, this is business unit, cost center, department, project, you, cost, department, project. And so we should see, let's see, this is all blank. What happened? What happened? Let's try that again. Refresh the data. Do text to columns. We'll say delimited. Oh, not fixed with delimited. Break it out by the dashes. Ok, 
finish that. Oh, it's it's the leading zeros. That's why it's confusing. You know, it thinks that this is all uh, these are numbers and not text. So if we go to home, let's let's say we say treat this as text. Mm, that's not great. Try it one more time, right? Basically, it's, it's cutting out all the leading zeros, and that's why my numbers look funny. Uh, let's treat this all that way. Well, that's silly. That's not a great report. But we will, I guess we could we could truncate these and compare them that way. Um, but so that's this isn't great. This is a start. So in a in a follow up video here, I'd like to show you how we could maybe use Power Query to make that a little bit uh, more enjoyable. Um, and then the, the last thing that I just wanted to talk about in this video is, is right, the, the delimiter that we have here is based on these dashes and, and that is configurable in the system as well. For instance, you might not want the dashes to be a delimiter if your project financial dimension had dashes in it as well. Um, and that is controlled in your general ledger parameters. Under your chart of accounts and dimensions, you can change the delimiter. So if you would like that delimiter to be a dash, it can be a dash or a, a bar, a pipe, double pipe, et cetera. Um, so that's, that's how that works. That's that piece of that. Um, so I'd like to do some more videos around the, the Excel connector and, and how to do some, some reporting out of dynamics using the Excel connector. But this is a, a good starting point just to show how you could either uh, you know, use the, the, the list page of the master data that you're trying to work with and, and add things and make a view and, and see things in dynamics. Uh, or you could use the, the Excel add-in and do, do something similar. Uh, and, and which is especially important for, for something like the financial dimension, which is available in the OData connection, even though you can't bring a specific financial dimension onto the list page. Okay, uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Uh, looking forward to the next video. I'll see you.